Hi everybody, this is Crystal. So today I'm going to show you how to make this baby blanket here. Now it is very easy. It would be great for a beginner or a novice to crochet. Um, it's just all single crochet. So as long as you know how to do a chain and a single crochet, you'll be able to do this video and make this make a very, very nice uh, baby gift for somebody. You know, so it's a great beginner project. And even if you're not a beginner, it still makes a beautiful blanket. So, I mean, advanced you're more than welcome to follow along it's super easy so let's go ahead and get started okay for this project i used um caron the jumbo rolls it's a uh, hundred percent medium weight four ply acrylic and it is it's soft for for baby the color i use is called baby rainbow and let's see here now there are 595 yards per skein I used two, almost two whole skeins. This is all I have left. Let me scoot this over. Of my two skeins. There's two skeins. So, if you, I don't know, you should have enough. But I can't say for certain if you, maybe if you crochet a little tighter than me. I don't know if that takes up more yarn or not. But, but I went through two skeins and this is what I have left of the two skeins. So two skeins was enough for me. And if you want to tie it up like mine is, you're going to need um, some ribbon here. This is a uh, 5 8 inch of it. 5 8 inch. There's 18 feet in here. I don't know if I'll use all 18 feet of it, but, but it, that's the size I use. So, this is what we're going to do. We're going to use both skeins at the same time. So, we're going to take our two strands, both skeins, just pull from the center of both of them, like this, and use both skeins at the same time. And we're going to use, we're going to need a size Q, which is a 15.75 millimeter crochet hook. Now you want to take both strands and make a slip knot on your hook. Now I already have my big piece done, so I'm going to show you on a smaller scale. But you will need to do a chain of 58. So you just go ahead and start making your chain. The only thing about using two strands is you just want to make sure that you're getting both strands when you're going through your stitches. Okay, now remember, you want to make a chain of 58. I'm just going to show you on a little bit smaller scale. But once you get your chain of 58 done, we're going to do a single crochet in the second stitch from the hook. Now remember, we don't count this one that's on our hook. So there's this one and this one. This is number two. Go ahead right into it and do a single crochet. And remember to grab both loops that are on. Grab both pieces of yarn that are on your hook and do your single crochet. And we're going to put one single crochet in every stitch for the length of the chain. And they're going to be big, airy stitches because we're using the big hook. And if you've never used the big hook before, it will take a little time to get used to it. But you'll get a hang of it. It does tend to make your hands hurt a bit. If you crochet with it for too long in my experience it does especially using two strands at once but you'll get it so it's one single in every stitch for the length of your chain making sure you're getting both loops or both pieces both strands of yarn when you go through your loops you don't want to come out the other end and only have one strand on your hook. So continue doing the one single crochet until you get to the end of your row. Okay, when you make it to the end of row one, you should have a total of 57 single crochets. 
57. And that's the number you should have at the end of every row that we do. So what we're going to do for row 2 is chain 1. Row 2 is the repeat row, which means it's the row that we, re that we repeat for the whole project. So we chain 1 and then we turn. Now that chain 1 does not count as a stitch. Some crocheters make it count as a stitch. I do not count it as a stitch hardly ever. If I ever do, I'll tell you, but rarely do I count this chain 1 as a stitch. So since I'm not counting as a stitch, I got to go directly into this very first stitch right here and make my first single crochet. Just like that. And now I'm going to work my way across, putting one single crochet in every stitch until I get to the end of row two. And remember, it's going to be, your stitches will be kind of gappy. It's supposed to be like that because we're using the large hook. So don't worry about that if that's happening. That's normal. Just make sure when you go through each stitch and you pull up your loop that you still have your two strands of yarn on your hook. You don't want to lose a strand somewhere. So just continue doing one single crochet in every stitch until you get to the end of row two. Okay, I'm coming to the end of row two in my last stitch here. I need to go right into that. to the last stitch like that and you still should have 57 single crochets now all we do is repeat row two so for row three we're going to chain one and turn our work just like we did for row two and remember this does not chain one does not count as a stitch it does not count as anything so we got to go directly into this very first stitch to start our row right there and single crochet there and now it's one single crochet and every stitch across until you get to the end of the row so it's really easy like I said if you're a beginner and you know how to do single crochets you should be able to do this blanket and it makes a very pretty gift so continue one single crochet in every stitch until you get to the end of row three. Okay, I made it to the end of row three and I have my 57 stitches. So now I'm just gonna keep repeating what we're doing. So we're gonna chain one and turn. Chain one does not count as anything. So we gotta go in this very first stitch and single crochet. And you single crochet in every stitch until you get to the end of the row. Now, when every time you get to the end of the row, you should always have 57 single crochets. So we're just going to keep repeating that row two like we're doing. We're on row four now until we reach a total of 75 rows. And remember I said it's going to be it's going to be an airy blanket so it has finger holes in it and that's how it's supposed to be don't worry about it and think that you're doing something wrong so keep repeating row two like we've been doing for a total of 75 rows 57 stitches should be at the end of every row and then I'll go ahead and show you how to put an edging on it Okay, once you got your 75 rows done, and remember you can make it bigger if you want, you'll just need more yarn than what I said in the beginning of the video. What we're going to do is go around all the edges, all four edges, with a row of single crochet just to clean them up and make them look real nice. So I just finished my 75th row, so I'm going to do a chain of one. Now I'm going to go right here into this next spot. We're going to work down this long side first and put a single crochet right into that. So right into that spot and single crochet. And then I'm going to go right here to the next spot, kind of right in between these two 
spaces and single crochet. And again, just an axle hole right here and single crochet. Now I'm going to do that all the way down this long side of the blanket. And that's going to make the edge look nice and clean. Again, right through this hole, just go right through it and single crochet. And then the next one, single crochet. And then the next little hole here, and single crochet. Next one, just like that. And you can see it makes the edge look a lot nicer and cleaned up. Especially if you're going to give it as a gift, you want it to look really nice. So I'm going to continue doing this all the way down my long side. And I'll meet you when I get to the end of this long side at the corner. Okay, I've made it down the long side and I'm right down here at the corner. And you can see this is where we first started because there's our long tail. Now right here in this corner stitch, I want to put three single crochets in the corner. That way it'll round the corner nicely. And lay flat so there's one I want to put three in the same stitch two and then one more makes three and now I'm going to work along this short side here continuing putting one single crochet in every stitch now you'll be able to see the stitches pretty well just right here through these holes and you want to try to hide this tail as you go, if you can. That way, there's not so many tails to hide later. But I just kind of hold it back there. And then when I do my single crochet, I just make sure it's right behind it. And that's going to hide it as you go. And you won't have to sew it in later, which is always a plus. No one likes sewing in tails. I don't anyways. So I'm going to continue putting one single crochet in every stitch along the bottom or along the short side. And as you can see, when you put one single cro or three single crochets in a corner, it made it nice and rounded, so it lays flat. If you didn't put, if you just put the one, it would kind of flip up. So put, by putting three, you made it look lay flat. So just like this, one single in every stitch, and I'm going to meet you at the next corner. Okay, I, I have made it to my next corner, and what we're going to do is we're just going to put three single crochets into this last corner stitch here. So right here. So just go ahead and put three single crochets in it. There's one, two, three, and then go ahead and continue down the long side again, putting one single crochet in each one of these little holes here in between the stitches. Just like we did on the other long side. here and right here so it's one single in every stitch and then I'll meet you at the next corner when we get finished with this other long side okay I've made it up my other long side and I'm up here at the corner again this corner right here and I want to go ahead and put three single crochets into that corner so one two and three. Now I'm going to work one single crochet in every stitch across the top and you'll be able to see right where it goes until I get to my starting point where we started going around. So 
so you'll be able to see the stitches really easy now. So one single crochet in every stitch here across the top and I'll meet you at the end when we get to the corner where we started earlier. Where we first started going around it and edging it. Okay, I have made it back to where I started. This is my last stitch and here's that chain one we did and then we started working single crochets on the side. So I'm going to put three single crochets into this the last stitch here. Oh. That. Now we're going to skip that chain one right there and we're going to slip stitch into the very first single crochet we did. It's kind of along the side. So this is the chain one. Right there is the first single crochet we did. And we want to slip stitch into that. And then we can clip our yarn and hide our tails. Okay. Now the front side, the both sides of the blanket look similar except for the edging is going to be the right side of the edging. You can see the right side here, and then when you flip it, you can see the wrong side. It's not much of a difference, but if you're going to fold it up nice and neat, you want to make sure the right side of the edging is facing you. So I'm going to go ahead and take my yarn needle, and I am going to weave in my tails to the back side of the blanket, the, where the wrong side of the um, edging is facing. So you want to make sure you weave them in pretty good, since it's... A baby blanket and it's probably going to be washed and wallered around and stuff so I kind of just weave them all over the place over and under stitches because I don't want nothing coming undone in the washer because then <sighs> that's the worst it's hard to fix once that happens Once you feel like your tail's pretty tight and you don't think it's going to come undone, you can just go ahead and clip it off. Sorry if I was out of screen there. Okay, that's probably good for me. So I'm going to go ahead and clip that off. Now, earlier, the other tails, I hid them as I was going. Remember, I was crocheting them in, so I just give them a nice tug there, make sure they're tight, and then I'm going to go ahead and clip them off, because I went uh, pretty far down, so I know they're not going to come undone. And that's it. So I'm going to set my yarn to the side, and I'm going to see if I can get it folded up real good here. Okay, for the ribbon, I don't have a lot of desk room, but I'll try to show you the best that I can here. Let me get my camera adjusted so it's going to be from the side a little bit. But I folded mine. It's still a pretty big blanket, even folded like this. But I folded mine um, in half long ways and then in half again. Make sure the um, good side of your edging is facing up. Get all the corners nice and straight. Now, if you want to fold it again, you can. That is completely up to you. I might do that. But I think what I'll do is take it and I'll fold it, flip it over. I'm going to fold it where these edges right here are facing up. So I'm going to make sure all my corners are straight together. That way it's not so hard to get a ribbon around it and be so big. But there we go. Get it all nice and straight. You want it to look nice for if you're gifting it. This is going. This is going to somebody. So I want it to look nice. So now you take your ribbon, and this is the front of my work. I'm going to take it. I'm going to put the ribbon. Leave a lot of ribbon over here on this side, at least half of it. And I'm just going to flip it over like that. Now I'm on the back side. 
So now I'm going to cross my ribbons like that. And then I'm going to flip it back over to the right side. Flip it again. And now you'll probably have to straighten up your corners again and all your edging before you tie it off. I hope you can see this. I can't really look at the camera and do it at the same time. So I'm kind of just hoping that it's in the right in the right frame and then you just take it you probably have a lot of extra yarn but and then if you need to cut some of it off off to tie a bow you can but then you just take it make sure everything's nice and neat tucked in and tie a bow here Now, I'm not the best at tying bows, so you may not want to watch me. I'm really pretty bad at it, but I just kind of take it. Go around. You'll probably have to fiddle with it for a while to get it right. I always do. But, I've got a fly over here bugging me in my video. So, kind of like that. And since it's a big blanket, I'll probably leave the big, big bow on it. And now... You want to take your scissors and cut off these at an angle, however long you want them to be. And that's it, really. That's all there is to it for your baby blanket gift. So I went ahead and found my scissors, and I just clipped them off about down to here, just a little ways. But that's it. That's all there is to it. And then you can kind of mess around with it a little bit more and get it all nice and straight. But I'm going to move my camera now so I don't get... You know, that's it. That's all there is to it. Very and there it is. Now, you, that's a nice baby gift. And it would, I mean, anybody would love to receive that. And it'd be great. I mean, it's great for beginners if you're just learning to crochet. Um, I think it turned out really well. So, if you make this or anything else, I'd really love to see a picture of it. You can post a picture on my Bag of Day Crochet Facebook page. I'll put a link to that below in the description box. And um, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. I got hundreds of other tutorials you can check out. And if you watched this video and you liked it, I'd appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up and maybe a share on Pinterest and Facebook. But until next time, have a good day.